Namaskaram. Good morning. Welcome to SCRT CLAP2 live webinar series uh, on spoken English for teachers. Mari Mito Onadi Ismail. Mari, you are watching us on YouTube as well as Facebook live of SCRT official channels. Mari, day 18. What is the topic today? You may be knowing that is spoken English for networking. Mari, manchi topic to we have resource persons, three resource persons. I welcome you all for today's day 18 session. All of you, namaste and welcome. So, with us, Thank you. Uh, Dr. Monshita Hachire Pandey. She is faculty member in uh, Ambedkar University. And if you see Madam's profile, she is a faculty in, in Center of English Language Education, CELE, in Ambedkar University, Delhi. She teaches courses in English proficiency, academic writing, and language teaching. Her, her research interests include classroom discourse, cross-linguistic transfer of skills, multilingual teaching, and learner's autonomy. Very fantastic. Uh, we are very happy to have you here, madam, such an eminent uh, resource person. You welcome for this today's session. And also... Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. Thank you very much, ma'am. With us, Dr. A. Hemalatagaru, School Assistant English, JPHS, Narayanavanam, Chittur District. You are welcome to this today's session, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Also, we have Mr. K. Rajesh Garu from MPUPS. Uh, Vijayanagaram. What's the uh, uh, Mandal name, ma'am, sir? Mentored Mandal, sir. Uh, yes. Kurla school name. Kurla school name. Thank you, sir. Uh, all of you, welcome for today's session. Okay. I request uh, Dr. Monishita ji to present her presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir, for those very kind introductions. I would now like to share my screen. Right. So, Andariki Namaskaram. I am extremely happy to be back uh, once again with another topic in the CLEP2 Spoken English series. And as you can see, today's topic is Spoken English for Networking. So, uh, as Ismail Garu has already mentioned, uh, there are going to be three people in today's webinar. Um, I'm Monishita and I, I'll be joined by Rajesh Garu and Hemlata Garu. They are also going to come into the webinar to share their insights on the topic. So let's begin. These are the uh, three objectives of today's webinar. Uh, so after attending today's webinar, we hope that you will understand the importance of networking in the lives of teachers. Uh, you will also be able to explore different ways to communicate effectively in networking situations. And finally, we hope that you will be able to use certain language expressions appropriately in your next networking context. Moving on to next slide. Now, when we talk about networking, it becomes very important for us to understand uh, CPD. So CPD stands for Continuing Professional Development. And um, teaching has evolved as a profession in the last few decades. Uh, uh, in the past, many a times, teaching uh, was seen not as a profession, but as something that anybody could do. You know, anybody who could read and write could become a teacher. But... Uh, in the post-independence era, with many, um, uh, you know, evolving policies in teacher education, we all know that today, uh, for us to become teachers, we need certain degrees, qualifications, experience. We need to clear certain exams, and that's when we enter the profession. Therefore, teaching has now evolved as a as a, a legitimate and a very important profession in our country, and that makes it mandatory for us as professionals, as teachers, 
be very mindful of our CPD activities. Now, what are CPD activities? These are uh, any efforts on the part of a teacher to improve her existing knowledge expertise uh, in the field. So when you attend meetings, webina webinars, seminars, uh, talks, conferences, training programs, orientation programs, uh, right? So any of or uh, when you do courses to improve your knowledge, etc. These are all part of your CPD uh, uh, initiatives as a teacher, as a professional. Now, what are the benefits of being a teacher who constantly takes part in these kind of events? The first and the most obvious benefit is that it helps us to develop new skills and it gives us a competitive edge over others. So if the one who is very active, who is always trying to keep track of what are the events happening in surroundings and district, right? Even uh, online, there are so many different events that are happening, which are free, which you can just attend from any part of the country. So uh, if we have a teacher who is more conscious of his or her CPD uh, activities, then that person will definitely have a more uh, advantageous kind of a edge over other peer teachers. Uh, the second benefit of uh, keeping your professional development goals in mind is to keep yourself updated with what's happening in your profession, right? So uh, in this rapidly changing world and in the 21st century where new skills are replacing the old ones, it is very important for us to keep ourselves updated. Based on our updation of skills, our students' experience in the class will get directly affected. For example, technology. Uh, we have seen in the recent uh, days how this pandemic has changed the way we look at teaching and learning, right? So this is just an example how uh, use of mobile phones or use of various remote ways of learning has now become part of our everyday living given the present situation. But my hunch is that it's not just the pandemic, but even uh, you know, in, in normal days, every moment, certain things are changing in our surroundings. And it's very important for us to keep ourselves updated with those changes and what other teachers are doing to manage those changes, right? So the next benefit activities is to refresh your memory and relearn old techniques and theories. So it's not just about learning new things, but it's also about revisiting old things. So in our B. Ed. programs or during our post-graduation and graduation days, we have learned certain things. But when we attend these CPD activities, they help us to revisit those existing techniques and knowledge bases and engage with them in a different manner. Look at them from a different perspective. Because when we learn something as a student and then we go to the classroom and experiment and we come back and engage with something, then our way of looking at things change. So that's also one benefit of taking part in various CPD initiatives. The second last point here is networking with peers. So when you attend an event, a professional event, the opportunity that that event opens up for you is to network with other teachers and other professionals in the field. And therefore, in today's webinar, we are going to discuss precisely this, that when we are part of these events and we have the opportunity to network with other teachers and colleagues, what are some of the things that we need to be careful about? And finally, re-energize and re-energizes and sparks creativity. So in our day-to-day -day routine life, sometimes, we get into some sort of a ritualistic teaching. You know, we 
get into our comfort zones we get into a pattern and we become very comfortable we don't push ourselves but when we visit uh, when we visit um, other events and we meet other teachers we listen to them what they are doing it also uh, gives us energy to continue to push ourselves and keep experimenting with what's working what's not working in our classroom so our creativity our innovative spirit our spirit to look at every class as a new class everything that we do in class be very uh, you know critical of our own practices these kind of energies we get when we get connected with the wider community of practice so more than anything else engaging in cpd activities helps us to remind ourselves that we are not alone we are part of a bigger community of practice which is going to help us to collaborate and move forward in our journey as a teacher now here i'm going to share with you some tips for your next networking event well in the covid 19 times of course we are taking part in some cpd activities like this webinar without having to meet people but this is not going to be always the case you will have to face to face attend meetings events seminars trainings and you will also have to meet people and know them and introduce yourself to them and uh, you know improve your networking skills so what some of the things that we need to keep in mind while networking with people the first thing is own your public speaking skills now public speaking is of course different from networking because networking is when you are talking to a small group of people right like two people three four five people in in a group public speaking is when you stand and you speak to a large audience although they are two different things still it is advisable that to shed your shyness hesitation under confidence it is good to keep working on your public speaking skills so take initiative to be part of various events in your school where you can lead an event where you can uh, address a wider uh, audience not just your classroom but then outside the classroom try to make use of opportunities to visit other schools and you know meet other teachers and talk to them about your initiatives and ideas uh, it would also be good if you uh, try to uh, improve your presentation skills so using powerpoint slides to share little things that you are doing in your classroom within the staff room you can share you can have weekly meetings monthly meetings where three or four of your colleagues can come together and share what you are doing you can share your challenges your aha moments when you felt that something went right so to prepare yourself for a networking event it's a ongoing process consciously see to it that you create opportunities where you are connecting with more and more people and sharing your ideas the second tip is meeting so keeping the cultural context in mind when you start a conversation it's very important to begin with a very positive greeting so in our context say a namaskaram is a positive way to start a conversation if you go to a uh, um uh, an event where you have people from the international community then you might want to uh, shake hands right so uh, starting with a greeting making eye contact smiling when you're greeting somebody these are small things but they are very important in a networking event the third tip is win the name game research has shown that when we talk to somebody and we remember their name when we meet them for the first time then it instantly helps us to connect with people 
So get the names of people correct. Get the right pronunciation of the names. If forget the name of a person, suppose you meet somebody, you find the name and then you find out the name and you forget. Don't feel shy to ask again. You can say, I'm sorry, but I didn't get your name. Could you please repeat? So even if you forget, please ask for the name. Don't try to avoid using the name of a person in a conversation. Using the name of a person in a conversation helps us to make an instant connection. So this is an important tip for us to remember. The fourth point is show interest. When you are talking to somebody in a training, orientation, seminar, in a networking event, ask genuine questions, show interest in the conversation. If you simply uh, introduce yourself and move on, then you have actually lost the opportunity to uh, have any future or collaboration with the person. So instead of meeting 100 people, it is better to meet 10 people, but engage with those 10 people deeply by making them understand that you genuinely have interest in them and their work. The next tip is ask a connector for help. So some of us are not very comfortable to just go and ask a stranger to introduce themselves. If there are a group of five teachers, we don't feel comfortable to just barge in and you know tell them that I want to be part of this conversation. In that case, if you feel uncomfortable to start conversations, it is advisable that you ask somebody else to you. So if I know that I want to go and talk to four or five people, but I don't know them, but somebody else knows, then I can request the other person whom I know to into a group of people I want to interact with. So asking somebody to help you connect with another person is a very positive strategy. Because when somebody personally introduces you, it has a much higher impact. Right. And in networking events, everybody is open to this. So don't feel shy to ask some known person to introduce yourself to a group of unknown people. The next is give a sincere compliment. Now, this is again something that is very useful. But you have to be very careful also. Try to give compliments related to the person's talents and the person's professional achievements. That is a safe compliment. For example, when somebody is talking about their classroom or about their school or about their work, then you can say, oh, you seem to be a very passionate teacher. OK, I think you are a very hardworking person. I believe you are very creative. So giving these kind of compliments, which is coming from the person's work, is a safe way to give compliment. However, if you don't find an opportunity to give compliment related to talent or work, then if you feel that somebody is feeling very comfortable with you, then you can also give compliment related to somebody's dress. For example, you can say, Hemlata Garu, your sari looks very nice on you. Or Rajesh Garu, this shirt really suits you. You look very confident, right? So these kind of compliments can also trigger a rapport among networking colleagues. However, please remember that when you are giving personal compliments, be very careful. Don't make anybody uncomfortable. Uh, don't say things which are going to make people feel that you are trying to be cheeky or you're being cheesy, right? For example, saying, telling somebody, you are very attractive. I want to become your friend. Uh, I really like you. You know, these kind of things will go against you because it's a professional space and 
compliments have to be given very carefully right so don't tell people that they are handsome attractive beautiful uh, you have a good figure uh, all that body related comments don't do those kind of things because that will uh, not help you people will move away from you they will feel uncomfortable so don't make anybody feel uncomfortable uh, remember when you are giving compliment you are trying to connect with the person at a professional level not at a personal level to show your like or dislike right so try to limit your compliments to the person's work and talent rather than physical body or facial uh, beauty or other kind of things now the next point is share opportunities so if you uh, know about another event that is going to happen or if you find out about something new then bring it in the conversation and share with people don't be uh, so competitive and jealous that i should not tell others what's going to happen uh, if i uh, if i am going for that event and that teacher also goes then both of us will become competitors yeah or there is the state level competition you don't inform others these are not going to help us to increase the community of practice so share share opportunities share ideas uh, try to uh, ask people what challenges they are facing right so that uh, there can be mutual discussion and dialogue and sharing can happen the final tip for your next networking event is learn to tell a story so story telling like we have uh, discussed in various webinars is a very powerful tool whether it be inside or outside the classroom now what do we mean by story uh, each one of us in our lives we uh, take inspiration from people from uh, from experiences so when you are networking with people if you ask them something like Uh, at what point of time did you decide to become a teacher what's your story yeah or uh, who is the person in your life who inspires you right so uh, trying to know people's personal stories which is linked to their professional success goals or decisions will also lead to very interesting conversations and you can also think of uh your life stories you know your childhood experiences as a student that guides your decisions as a teacher so you can think of some personal stories which has an impact on your professional journey and similarly you can try and ask other people to sh share their stories so now we move on to the next slide these are some of the don'ts uh during a networking event first of all don't be a card shark i don't know if you have met such people i know such people who go around and keep taking people's cards or phone number and email id they go around with a copy or a book one notebook or the diary they have one pen every place they will go and they will keep asking people a uh, car uh, uh, madam can you give me a phone number your email id Ma sir can you give your email id phone number and at the end of the event they have 30 email ids and phone number but they have not connected with any one person so don't be a card shark that you're going around collecting contact details with the person that's not going to help and believe me 99% of the times those kind of contact details you don't even use you go home and you throw the diary somewhere so don't go around just asking for contact details go and introduce yourself know the person take interest in the person connect with the person find common areas of uh, discussion and and connection and then ask for contact details and share details so at the end of a networking event don't think that i'm the number of contacts i have is a success no it's the quality that matters not the quantity the second don't is to have a cold body language remember we speak a lot through our body language 
when we are meeting somebody for the first time, it's very important to have a warm body language. For example, if we, uh, for example, if I go to you and if I cross my hands like this while talking to you, I'm standing and I'm crossing my hands. This shows that I'm not interested in the conversation because see, I'm closing myself by crossing my hands. So don't use this kind of body language when you cross your hands. Keep your hands open because when you keep your hands open, it shows that you're interested. If you're sitting, try to lean forward. If you uh, lean backward like this, suppose I'm sitting like this and talking to you on the webinar. What will you feel? That Monishita ma'am is not interested to talk to us, right? So don't lean backward. Come forward and lean forward to show that you're very interested in the conversation. Smile, make eye contact, ask for clarifications, engage with the person's uh, um, uh, topics and discussions. So body language is very, very important. The next is interrupting. Try not to interrupt people. We have lots of things to say, but when somebody else is talking, it is better to let them talk and finish, and then you talk. So, but that sometimes there are moments when people don't stop. They go on and on and on and on talking. Then how will you interrupt? You can say, I am sorry to interrupt you, but I have something to add here. Or I would also like to share something. Okay. So if, if you're interrupting, try not to, but if you're interrupting, then, you know, uh, interrupt in a way that the person doesn't feel bad. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry uh, to butt in. I'm sorry to, uh, 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 you know, come into the conversation like this, but I have something to say here, you know. Then the next is not listening. Again, this is a very bad thing to do in a networking conversation. Somebody is talking to you and you're looking at the food area or you're looking at other people or you're looking at your mobile phone or you're looking at your laptop. Uh, this is very insulting. So don't uh, get distracted when somebody is talking to you. The next is constantly talking about your school and yourself. So you are have to see to it that how much of yourself you are sharing about should also be balanced. If you're only going on and on and on about yourself, then it will not be your dialogue. The next is being lazy. Don't be lazy. When I say don't be lazy, it means when you go to an event, you don't take initiative. You're like, my HOD asked me to attend this, so I'm attending. My principal told me, so I'm here. I don't need to do anything. So those kind of thoughts we should not have. When we are there in the event, when we have made the effort to go there, we should give our best. After coming back from a networking event, please don't just throw away the contact details. Like I said, even if there are five people with whom you have connected, follow up. Connect with them on Facebook. Send them. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a professional website where professionals put their uh, work, their uh, work profile. So you can become part of LinkedIn. You can become a uh, part of Facebook. If you're not already, if you are already part of Facebook, then you should send a request and messages to these four or five contacts you have got. You can also, uh, you can also go to YouTube and check out if they have any uh, uh, YouTube channels and post comments. You should also drop an email to the person with whom you have connected, or simply you can send a WhatsApp text if the person has shared the mobile number. So follow up, follow up with your contacts. Don't just take the numbers and then forget about it. Then the networking has been completely unsuccessful. And finally, be prepared. You know, Don't just go to the networking event without having anything in your head. For example, think of three questions that are bothering you right now related to your role as a teacher. For example, uh, Andhra Pradesh is going on a, a change to 
to medium of instruction this is something at the top of your mind so pose questions to other colleagues uh, how are you planning to switch to english medium instruction what are some of the initiatives your school is taking how will you manage learner assessment what will happen to the higher classes what strategies are you going to use so think of concerns that you have and uh, strategize your questions accordingly so be prepared you know rather than just going without any plan so uh, now i'm going to invite rajesh garu to take over he is going to focus on the language for networking rajesh garu please thank you ma'am um, namaste good morning to all viewers uh, i am very happy to uh, having this opportunity i am very thankful to srt and monshita ma'am for giving me this opportunity so uh, today i am going to share some tips and valuable suggestions uh, for networking so you have already came across the word networking see the meaning of the word networking networking means um, interacting with others with new people for uh, development to develop social or personal contacts a professional contacts also so networking means to have a small talk have a conversation conversation and uh, have a um, getting a good relationship with others so networking is very useful in our professional and personal life because as a, as a social being uh, we have to talk with others and we we need to uh, build relationship with the uh the people who who, are, who might help you so here the networking will help us to make important connections and achieve our goals definitely you see uh, um, if you want to have goal any dreams you want to achieve and you want to develop in professional life so you need to contact and you need to attend such type of you to contact such people who will help you and uh, and to share their knowledge share your opinions and get some suggestions from them so so for getting all these things you talk with them interact with them so in the part of networking the connection having relationship with them is very very important so networking will help to build a good relationship with others and a great conversation is an opportunity for the beginning of a potential professional collaboration so i have already told you that whoever you are you are a teacher a trainer doctor Where it is, so we, uh, as a teachers, you know very well that we have to uh, learn new things. Suppose in this type of uh, situations, everybody has uh, um, uh, having the digital uh, interaction with. So we are teaching to the uh, uh, on a social media on internet like that. So you need to develop your personal skills. So in order to develop your personal skills, you need to talk with. You need, you need to get a new to such type. and share your opinions to others so it is very very important it is very very important to uh, to have a talk and uh, meet some people who might help you and you are having such giving such type of opportunities to you to share your knowledge and skills uh, and you know very well the fear shyness and the confidence stop us from networking effectively so it's very very uh, uh, i think uh, big uh, challenge to us to overcome our fear shyness when you are talking to someone having conversation with others so in, uh, for overcome all these things so we must take this uh, uh, challenge uh, to overcome all these uh, shyness and confidence like that for getting such confidence you need to practice you need to prepare and you need to have acquire such knowledge and language uh, uh, for your uh, coming networking events the people you suppose you want to uh, meet you are going to meet a, a professor or any uh, digital expert and any author so what you are going to talk you have to uh, uh questions and ideas and discussion point before going to the event and such a type of language and related uh, uh, vocabulary and the great questions will help you to overcome the fear and shyness and uh, uh, whatever it is and and you know very well that uh, nobody is uh, uh, alone so because of you need to talk with someone so here uh, moving to the next slide here i am going to share uh, uh, share some uh, valuable tips for face to face networking see the first one is uh, make friends at workplace you know very well the workplace is very very important that we are having a lot of time and spending a lot of time in the workplace so 
having good relationship with others and uh, good uh, good rapport with your friends and colleagues is very very important so that the relationship will uh, happen uh, will happen with your talk and conversation and uh, having good talk with them so uh, and go to work related events and functions then second one to develop your skills already told you that if you want to learn something or share something and you want to share your work a uh, 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 work and experiences like that you need to attend such type of events and functions so for workshops and training programs conferences like that so when you are attending to the pen you you may mm, across so many people uh, who are related to you who are working in same area and same uh, um, interests like that so you can contact with them you can share your ideas and you can share their opinions also so in the particular events and workshops like that and third one is uh, join collectives or clubs in your town and it is very very important that uh, i think events and workshop we may not attend every time and they every day so it is very very useful to uh, join in the clubs so you can share your opinion through the social media facebook and whatsapp uh, uh, twitter like that so if you want to uh, uh, improve your language skills you need to join in the language club if you want to improve your digital skills you want to uh, uh, join in such type of groups and clubs like that or uh, if you want to getting some funds to your school uh, you you want to join in the social and meet such type of uh, social workers who will help you uh, who can uh, uh, give opportunity to do something like that and attend conventions and workshop related to our areas of expertise so it is very very important to attend such type of conferences and workshop uh, uh, whenever you have a chance to attend them uh, because of it will gives you to uh, a lot of scope uh, and it will uh, uh, make your relationship well and build some uh, rapport and make connections with them and having good friends uh, to work with you or share your ideas like that so uh, going to the next slide uh, here i am going to share some valuable tips and strategies uh, which will help you in, in in your next networking event so here are the six strategies uh, 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 to make your networking very interesting uh, conversation is very interesting so the first one is be a passion detective uh, and the secondly find common ground and third one is uh, ask conversational questions fourth one uh, give great answers fifth be open to different perspectives and final one is uh, keep short and sweet these are the six strategies we are going to have a uh, deep uh, in the next slides uh, then how these strategies will help you in your next uh, networking uh, conversation so uh, coming to the first strategy be a passion detective uh, so uh, you know very well people love to talk about themselves what their interests and the things they uh, love to do like so it is very very important to know someone uh, what someone is into someone is into me so what he want do what he uh, like to do uh, in in your in his um, in his time like that so it is very very important to uh, uh, get those uh, things their interests before going to talk with someone so if you have a have a time uh, to take some time uh, a few minutes uh, to find out such interest definitely the conversation will be good and it will have a good relationship uh, between them so uh, uh, for uh, i think i am going to share some three good questions uh, uh, these questions will help you to make a uh, to be a great detective so when we are going to have a such type of event or conversation uh, a workshop like that you ask these questions uh, will help you to um, go on good conversation so first one is uh, what do you wish you had more time for so if you have time and what you are going to do and what you uh i uh, like to do because i am when i have a free time i want to do some paintings and uh, prepare some youtube videos watching some videos like that so the second one is if you could be doing anything right now what would it be you have to do and the final one is uh, what makes you jump out of bed in the morning you know jump out of the bed is expression uh, that uh, you can't wait to do uh, uh, the thing so the uh, the things uh, the, the part i think the work will give you great pleasure in, in doing such type of works like that so you have to find out such type of interest such type of uh, things when you are going to have a conversation conversation with them 
so the second strategy is uh, find common ground you know you know it is uh, very well the, the friendship will happen with uh, between the uh, having same interest same commonality uh, within the two people so if you the persons who are talking uh, if they are having same same common interest same idea same views and definitely there will be a, a, a good conversation and uh, uh, build there is an opportunity to build a good relationship so like that you have to find out what commonality uh, and common interest before going to talk with someone in a in a event like that uh, you need to ask the questions what do you usually do for fun so because of people want to talk about their uh, personals uh, uh, how other people interact and everything with them is also they want to know so you want to ask the question are you into into movies and cooking means what how what do you like uh, why do you like gardening like that uh, uh, when you are uh, why do you like yoga because uh, when i'm uh, it's my hobby so because of i want to talk something and also people wants to listen uh, why i'm uh, doing all these things like that so if if you have concentrate on so have you ever planned to a school trip like that these questions and these uh, 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 are discussing on these uh, transactions if you find out some commonality definitely it will be a good conversation and third one is ask uh, conversational questions you know uh, uh, conversation means you have to talk and you have to ask questions and you have to listen to them so only listening to the others is not a conversation so you have to ask some conversational questions you know already we have session uh, um, uh, the question uh um words like that uh, questioning session already we have done in our previous webinars i think it will be uh, very useful to you to listen once again listen to the session like that so we know very well that we have two types of questions one is open and ended questions and the second is so when you are asking the question do you like uh, yoga or do you like the teaching like that the answer will be yes or no so the conversation will end so close the questions will uh, um Uh, and the conversation close the conversation so you need to ask some open ended questions referential questions that will open up the hearts of uh, minds of the person who are talking with you so use uh, the open ended question words means w h question what where how why like that if you uh, asking such questions definitely there will be a good conversation suppose if you are asking do you like yoga then it will only yes or yes uh, answer will be yes or no so in, instead of asking that closed question you can ask this uh, why do you love like yoga so what do you like about teaching so like if you are asking such question definitely there will be a uh, uh, you can also get we are going to have a good answer so uh, and also the person who want who speaking with you definitely uh, uh, share his ideas and views uh, and uh, talk something like that so so why do you love yoga and if you could only choose one fun activity to do per year what would be and why so such type of uh, conversation questions uh, will help you to uh, um plan the conversation conversation and have a chance the opportunity to share the views like that so the my fourth strategy uh, fourth strategy is uh, give great answers so uh asking the can uh, conversation questions is very very important and also it is very very important to give the great answer suppose the people uh, uh, a person asking you uh, ask a, uh, a question why do you like teaching so you uh, suppose you are going to give an answer like this uh, um i don't have such great reasons why i'm like why i like you teaching like that if you are giving such uh, answers uh, definitely there will be a uh no conversation so so how to give the great answer and adding your live example experiences and achievements and and your goals and dreams to uh why you are working in the particular area and why you are interest showing interest in the uh um, particular domain like that uh, so giving the great answers definitely will uh, others to listen uh, uh, and um, uh, having such type of concentration towards you is very very important uh, to give the great answer and asking the great answers also you have to prepare your own answer suppose if you are asking the question question 
uh, why do you love yoga like that then you have to do and you have to share your uh, opinion also and you have to share your answer also because it it i uh, while doing yoga i i'm getting a pleasant uh, environment like that having have good uh, daily mental health like that suppose you to add your uh, your experiences like that uh, and things and uh, our uh, opinions and the real time experiences like that everything you should add in your uh, answers will help you to uh, run the great conversation and strategy 5 is be open to different perspectives see you uh, in the part of conversation uh, conversation i think uh, uh, people have different ideas it may Uh, the ideas and views uh, may uh, i think like by you or not suppose uh, the people who are talking to you uh, he has a different idea and you don't agree with them i think may agree or may not agree so you have to share and accept their opinion and their views is very important and also sharing your views in a polite way in a respectful way it's also very very important suppose the person talking about uh, something Uh, uh, uh aggressive and in a different way that you may like or may not so so you may agree or may uh, may not so you have to uh, um, listen to them and you have to share your opinion and share your ideas in your perspective suppose uh, there are some uh, ways to disagree politely so so the first one is uh, i had in thought of it like that you may be right but i am sorry i see it differently that's an interesting point of view but uh, suppose you are talking about the interesting yes it's interesting but in my point of view i think it is the uh, better thing to uh, have such type of ideas like that i can see you are really passionate about that this is a new way of looking at it so it's okay but uh, this is also a good thing i think uh, i think i have different idea i think people are now looking in in the in the perspective also like that so how to share your uh, views and opinion ideas in your perspective politely like that so the final strategy uh, uh, in the networking conversation uh, so strategy final strategy is uh, keep short and sweet so you know very well uh, it is very very boring to listen to someone listen to someone who is uh, talking talking on and on like that talk 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 means it may be boring to us so uh the conversation should be short simple and sweet so when you are talking to someone and it is better to give opportunity to others to share their views and opinions like that so once uh, and then you can take the chance and give the chance to others so it will help uh, uh, to build a good rapport and have a good conversation so the, your conversation it short and sweet and uh, try not to dominate the convoy so while you are talking to someone or listening to someone so don't dominate them or uh, don't insult them and don't kidding them like that so and also while you are speaking to someone don't speak in a aggressive way in a dominating way like that it may be uh, it gives some uncomfortable to the people who are listening to you so stick to the main point don't worry about the tiny details you know that uh, uh, so talking on the uh, the main points uh, not add so much of um, uh, flavor to your uh, language it will uh, give the some distraction from listening to your voice like that so listen to others and share the conversation evenly so definitely so listening to others is very very important and share your opinion also is very very important so uh, now i am going to uh, uh, have discuss all these things now i'm going to have a we are going to have a model conversation uh, among the three teachers who are who are attended in a uh, training program how these steps and strategies will help uh, in the uh, networking conversation so let's have a look uh, okay we'll start hi ma'am i'm rajesh nice to meet you hello rajesh i am moni nice to meet you too oh and which school do you work I work in MPPS Jami. Oh, Jami. One of my friends also works there. Oh, really? What's his name? Oh, uh, Ramakrishna. Oh, Ramakrishna. I know him. He is a very good teacher. Yes, yes. He is very hard working. 
Yes, I saw some of his videos. Very interesting. Hmm. Nowadays, I'm also preparing some videos and lesson plans. In fact, I have been uploading a lot of material onto my blog. Oh, you have a blog? Great. What's your blog address? You know, it's uh, www.rajclassroom.com. It's my blog address. Uh, let's have a look and please visit and subscribe to it. Uh, sure, definitely. Uh, let's open it now and see it on my phone. Sure, sure. sure. Mm, okay, as US. Mm, wow, it's very nice. You are doing a great job. Uh, I can see some activities. They are very practical and creative. How did you get these ideas, Rajesh? Uh, hey, hey, ma ma'am. Uh, if you're free, please come here. What's up, Moni? Please meet Rajesh. He's doing a great job in his blog. Uh, he has creative activities, TLM videos, worksheets. Oh, really? Nice to meet you, Rajesh. I'm also very interested in doing such work. Actually, I also want to create a blog, but I don't know how to do it. And it must be very difficult to maintain it. I have watched a few videos on YouTube, but I'm unable to do it. Oh, interesting, ma'am. It's very easy. You know, you can create it in five minutes. Really? I can't believe it. Could you guide me? I have been waiting to do this for years now. Sure. It's my pleasure, ma'am. How do you get these ideas, Rajesh? I'm watching your activities. They are really amazing. It's not a big thing, ma'am. It's my hobby to keep writing about my classroom activities. And I just want to share with my colleagues and other teachers in, in the training programs like. Yes. And then a digital record of our activities. It shows our efforts towards professional development. It may also help our fellow teachers to, to try out new ideas in their classroom. This can lead to action research, isn't it? Well said, ma'am. Possibilities are immense. Rajesh, I'm very happy to meet you. I will share your blog address with my colleagues too. And share your best practices in the training program, okay? It's very important to share. Yeah, you are right. We must share his ideas and try out some of these activities. Thanks a lot, Moni and Hama, ma'am. I'm very thankful to you for your great support. Thank you. May I have your mobile number, Rajesh? Yes, sure. yes. Uh, Rajesh, uh, why don't you share a number? We'll keep in touch. Sure, ma'am. My number is 9704487533. Rajesh, we'll meet again. Come, come. The sessions are about to start. Yeah, you both go ahead. I'll join you later. Bye, Moni. Bye, Rajesh. You are on. Bye, ma'am. Okay, so there you saw a model conversation and the strategies that Rajesh Garu shared with us. Uh, those we tried to incorporate in the module conversation. I hope you will take note of that. Uh, here are some things to remember. Uh, as you saw, they are strangers, especially Rajesh and uh, Moni and Hema, they know each other, but Rajesh doesn't know the other two people. They tried to keep the conversation semi-formal, not very formal. If you keep it very formal, then you know people don't open up. So keep it semi-formal because they can be your potential collaborators. Uh, use hi, hello, instead of good morning and you know, like making it very formal. You can keep it hi, hello. You can say thanks instead of thank you very much or something like that. You can say yeah instead of yes. That will also make your conversation very uh, conversational. Use weak forms. We have discussed uh, a lot of these things in the webinar called introducing yourself. Uh, so if you have not watched the webinar on introducing yourself, please do, because there we have given you example of more weak forms. And we have also discussed how to introduce yourself in a networking context. 
So we have not included it again in this webinar, but I hope you have gone through that webinar. So weak forms are basically when you don't say the entire expression, I am, I have, instead you say, I am, I have, I'll, etc. Uh, and like you saw in the conversation, they were giving compliments to each other. They were taking genuine interest in each other. They were asking open-ended questions. They were trying to engage with each other. Nobody said yes, no, and kept quiet, right? So all those little strategies uh, were incorporated to make the networking um, interaction very conversational. Now, um, uh, there are a few more things which uh, we can see in the model conversation, like uh, common interests and connection. I think I've mentioned this point already. Question tags. That's going to be the last section of the webinar. Uh, asking, uh, uh, making statements and then um, using question tags is again a great way to uh, bring people into the conversation. If people are losing interest or if people are distracted, like, isn't it? Uh, aren't I, etc. <clears throat> Please use simple present tense to ask about people's work. This is a very common mistake that Indian speakers do. Instead of asking, where do you work? We say, where are you working? Uh, but actually, where are you working is not correct because it's present continuous. Present continuous is something that we are doing right now. For example, I am delivering a webinar. That's right now. But generally, I deliver webinars. So uh, please use simple present to ask about people's workplace. So ask, where do you work? In which school do you work? Instead of saying, where are you working? So please keep this in mind about simple present and present continuous. Use exclamatory expressions like, really? How interesting. Wow. I can't believe it. These uh, exclamatory statements also uh, make our conversation strong. Finally, share your contact details. Don't say no to contact details. If you're not comfortable sharing phone number, then share your email address. But never say no to a request for contact details. Now we uh, come to the last section of our webinar on question tags. I must say something here. Uh, we have been receiving a lot of requests from all of you to include a discussion on question tags. And because of this special request that has come from teachers, we decided to uh, include a short discussion on question tags. And uh, I request Hemlata Garu to quickly take us through uh, the question tag section. We are running out of time. Yes. So Hemlata Garu, yes, yes, uh, I answer. Keep it, yeah, so please keep it short and precise. We use question text to check an opinion or belief. You have about something or someone is true. Or to find out if someone agrees with you, we use this question tag. The, now the question is how to form question tag. Question tag is a short phrase that is added to the end of a statement to turn it into a question. By farming, to form a question tag, we have to use an auxiliary verb or a model followed by a pronoun, which refers to the subject of the statement. Here I, I would like to say that there are two types of uh, auxiliary verbs, primary auxiliary verb and modal auxiliary. Auxiliary verb is uh, nothing but a helping verb. Auxiliary verb adds some meaning, some grammatical meaning to the class in which it appears so as to express tense, voice, emphasis, etc. Auxiliary verbs usually accompany main verbs. For example, uh, Auxiliary, primary auxiliaries are be form, do form, have form. So we have to bring that have and uh, put uh, add subject we, pronoun of the subject in the chat. And another example, you study a lot. Study is main verb. There is no auxiliary verb. If in such cases, we have to use do. So you study a lot, don't you? And then how to make question tag? A very simple thing. The first one we have to remember is that if the statement is positive, the question tag should be negative. She is teaching. This is positive, affirmative. So there is no not here. She is teaching. So you have to bring is. This is the auxiliary verb here. You have to bring that and you have to put not after is and then write down pronoun. See, for positive statement, we have to say negative question tag. 
for negative statement we have to say positive question tag for example venu doesn't come here the negative statement is here so you have to take auxiliary verb from the statement that is does and then write down the pronoun of the subject that is he does he you want tell anyone else won't is the contracted form of will not so the statement is negative statement so the positive tag is will you and then if the statement contains an auxiliary verb or model you can use the same auxiliary or model in the question tag that is peter is coming today is is auxiliary verb the statement is positive so the tag should be ne negative he he is the pronoun of peter i don't need it the statement is negative so the positive question tag do i we were there positive statement once be you have never been to a conference this is negative statement so have you is the tag here and then if the statement does not contain an auxiliary or a model we use do does did for they live here here only the main verb live, live is there there is no auxiliary verb in such cases we have to use do for see the sentence is in present tense so use do then the tag should be negative because the statement is positive don't they siri works hard here siri is the third person so we have to use does and write down not here doesn't she she is the pronoun of the subject you smiled at me smiled that is the past tense so did is the past tense for do form so didn't you and then uh, already we discussed the statement we have to use negative question tag for negative statement we have to use positive question tag she is a good teacher isn't she we won the tlm competition didn't he because the sentence is in past tense so we use did here they are our new colleague aren't they they were with us in the training weren't they you will help me won't you we have already paid the fee haven't we he has gone home hasn't he you can do it can't you i am right aren't i see here you have to remember in the if the auxiliary verb is am there is no in the negative tag you should use aren't type not tam and type but in the positive tag we can use am i i am not blocking your view am i remember that positive question tag we can use am but not in negative question tag that is the only exceptional we should use aren't type in the case of am and for negative statement positive question tag is not easy to understand is it i don't look like him do i the books are not for us are they we were not late for the briefing were we you won't be late for the class will you we haven't reached the school yet have we sanjay could not join the group could he i am not blocking you of you am i because this is positive question tag we can use the am and then i if the auxiliary verb is there already we have discussed you have to write that auxiliary verb in the question tag maybe be forms or have forms or true forms if there is no auxiliary verb you have to use do based on the context if it is in the present tense do if it is a third person does if it is in past tense did she is a friend of you isn't she is is the auxiliary verb here you have finished your note haven't you have i am in the right room aren't i ah, did you observe i am here in the negative person tag you have to use of he was charming on the stage wasn't he was they were not leaving the meeting were they were i am not disturbing you am i am is the auxiliary verb here and do question tags he teaches english this is simple present tense so we have to use does doesn't he does she came to the workshop yesterday because it is in past tense did then she she doesn't attend seminars generally does she because third person does is the auxiliary verb here you are principal gave you leave then she because it is in past tense did we don't have access to the library do we do you see auxiliary verb here and models already we discussed modal auxiliaries are can could will would tell should may might must need ought to i can come with you for the survey can type can is model here we should not stop forming should he he should not stop forming should he should you could not go meet your guide could you could is model 
I must pay a fine for losing the room key. Mustn't I? Must is the model. I shall not go into the forest. Shall I? Shall is model. They will help us complete this course. Won't they? Will is model here. Model actually. So after uh, having discussed about uh, some important points of the question tag, let us have a model conversation in a in an orientation program. Here there are three such teachers. They converts. Here Ravi is a, a local person who is volunteering that orientation program. Let's begin. Rajini. Hello, I am Rajini. You are Ravi, aren't you? I am. Nice to meet you. You look like very cheerful person, don't you? I try. I try to be cheerful, Ravi. Please introduce me to your friend. Would you? Yes, of course. This is Rafael. We have also just met. Well, yes, but it seems like I know you all for a long time already. The atmosphere here is pretty. Um, what to say? Welcoming, isn't it? It is, Rajni. You look like you are from South. I am. I am from Chittor. You have a keen eye. Knowing him for a day now, I believe he saw that on the attendees list, didn't you, Ravi? You can really see now who has a keen eye here. Can't you write, Rajni? Now, have you all got the trainee badges? We all have got the badges. Is Ravi, come on, relax. You are taking your volunteer job too seriously. Oh, I agree. Volunteering as a guide for us has made him famous in our day among our colleagues, hasn't it, Ravi? You know, I am a local and I had to volunteer. Ah, oh, that reminds me, you are yet to show us the pictures. Yes, there are so many questions among them. As time is over, no, we can go for two, three questions only for today. Yeah, please. Yeah, do. the question may be, I think what I am, what I am understanding, for the primary students, how can we make them learn uh, further for specifically rural students to improve their skills in uh, uh, so uh, networking? Um, well, I think. Uh, here we are discussing networking in the context of teachers because uh, teachers are the ones who need to uh, engage in professional development. We are adults, we are professionals. So we need to meet new people. We need to find common interests. We need to collaborate, learn from each other. So today's session was more to do with you as a professional, how you will improve yourself than actually our primary students. So, because students, uh, I mean, they are too small, you know, uh, we can't really talk about networking skills of students as much as we can talk about our networking skills, because networking skill is different from socializing skills. Students need to socialize. Primary students need to make friends and all that is different. But networking is something else. Networking means for professional context, for professional contact, you are interacting not just talking to your neighbor and making a friend you know so socializing i think you are asking how we will in, uh, encourage our primary students to socialize with each other make friends in class but i think that is a separate topic altogether so we will keep that for some other webinar maybe yeah thank you very much ma'am uh, there are a similar few more persons uh, pertaining to the same thing for primary students how can we improve uh, these uh, networking skills regarding that. So I'm skipping all those things. Uh, again, uh, uh, for which uh, class we can, uh, can we can teach this for uh, high school students rather uh, uh, excluding primary students? Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe, yes, for higher classes where students are attending state level competitions, you know, they are taking part in creative writing or, you know, uh, you know, students are going and representing their school uh, at district level or national level. So, yeah, for senior students, maybe it will be useful if we uh, kind of groom them how to behave in a networking event. Uh, that is a possibility. 
but i hope you understand that today's uh, webinar's focus was very different we are trying to focus on our own skills as teachers and how we can be a good networker uh, so but yeah i agree that for class 10 11 12 like really high classes like 15 years and above uh, where students are uh, alone and they are going to some event they are almost young adults then for them it can be useful but for children i wouldn't suggest networking because they don't really network you know they play and they socialize oh thank you very much ma'am yeah if that is the case for higher students or for uh, uh, resourcing our teachers even you know at the during the teachers meeting or somewhere if that is the case how can uh, we plan, uh, prepare a plan for that do you need to use any lesson uh, tlms for that is there any resource available on it baskar board it is asking such question okay so if i get your question correctly you are saying how will you prepare before a networking event right so yes uh, this is a very good question because uh, we think that we are going to a training program what should i prepare what do i have to prepare they will tell us and i will listen but that's not a good strategy uh, first of all find out what the training program is all about for example if for example this spoken english a uh, webinar it's happening online but let's say that it was happening face to face actually i am coming and talking to you face to face in groups of 50 people let's say so you are getting mentally uh, prepared that okay i'm going for a spoken english webinar uh, spoken english uh, workshop on networking skills so you can actually think of some concerns that you have related to your network skills you can uh, note down some questions that you want to explore with your colleagues with your friends you can uh, think about uh, uh, finding out who i am finding about the resource person is very important in networking so you can go online you can check out the profile of uh, uh, the resource person you can request somebody to uh, introduce you to me directly connect with the resource person in the networking event so that we can continue our collaborations for life you see so uh, before you go for a networking event it's very important to have some strategies first is you must uh, decide what are your concerns why are you going to this networking event what do you want to get out of it right find out about the speakers the resource persons do your homework do your research also uh, uh, make a slits list of goals that you know in this networking event i will try to connect with two other teachers in this mandal level so that we can together work towards better uh, teaching conditions so keep some professional goals in mind uh, find out about the event well uh, no, note down your questions and concerns related to the topic of the training or the event and uh, you know uh, be open to making new connections take initiative go and approach people don't wait for people to come and say hi and hello to you some ways in which you can prepare yourself thanks i hope thank i have much. it yes ma'am yes. for a, thank you very much for excellent uh, fantastic answer uh, then another question from pushparaj gitilodu how does con conversation differs from interaction okay mm, that's again a very interesting question uh, conversation is generally uh, between limited number of people you know uh, it's more dialogic where there can be a very close uh, way to control the conversation you know uh, so for example i and ismail garu can have a conversation because you know we are face to face we are uh, uh, focusing on each other we are uh, uh, so in conversation the uh, in conversation the participants they are personally and directly engaging with the communicator but in interaction it dietary for example in class we have interaction because there are 50 students and one teacher so you are interacting with everybody but you are not personally conversing with everybody all the time right therefore we call classroom interaction not classroom conversation within interaction there is conversation so you have to understand that interaction is the bigger set like we have the set diagrams in maths right so classroom 
interaction or any interaction is the bigger set and within interaction you have one to one conversation so conversation is very controlled it's very uh, personalized it has very typical features of clarification confirmation uh, right going back and forth backtracking that is part of conversation but interaction is more like um, general you are uh, with a, a group and you're not like uh, personally talking to somebody one on one it's like a generic uh, question answer uh, or you know that kind of thing. Uh, uh, what I'm doing right now with all of you teachers is an interaction. It's not a conversation, right? Because I'm listening to your question and I'm sharing my insights. But Ismail Garu and I, we can have a conversation, right? We can engage in personal uh, interaction. So I hope I can. I have done justice to yes, that. Uh, very your answer is very clear. Uh, the same person uh, with another person. Please give clear distinction between seminar and symposium. Okay. Uh, interesting again. Seminar. Seminar uh, is more to do with uh, people who are all participants. You know, seminars are generally closed events. Seminars are not always open for everybody. Uh, so, for example, uh, suppose we are doing a district level training program and after the training, we ask all the trainee teachers to write something about their experience and present in a seminar. So seminar is a closed event where the audience is equal to participant. So participants and audience are the same and it's a, uh, it's a very closed event focused on a very specific uh, area. But symposium can be um, uh, more generic. So when there is a symposium, there can be more audience. There can be people who are not part of the research project, but they are coming and listening and sharing their ideas. Then how is a symposium different from conference? Conference is at a much more large scale. And conference uh, is much more formal, you know? Mm, but symposiums uh, have more closed groups you can have more time for discussion in symposiums. So suppose if I'm planning a symposium on TLM, then I will ensure that after every presentation, there is at least 30 minutes of discussion because symposium will open up space for lots of discussion. In conference, on the other hand, after every presentation, you hardly have any time for discussion. Uh, like your speaking time will be 15 minutes, discussion time will be five minutes, you know? So conferences are at a much more large scale. Conferences are much more formal in nature. Conferences have um, conference sessions generally have less interactional space, whereas symposiums open up more space for one to one discussion with speakers and uh, seminar. Like I said, it's a closed event where only certain participants of a particular uh, study or a particular training or a particular initiative or a particular project, only they are part of the seminar. So for example, uh, with my students, I do seminars because there are 40 students in my class. I teach them, they do some research project and then they present their research in the class. So it's a seminar. That is not a conference or a symposium, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Yes. Uh, sir, one uh, minute. Yes, please. I asked. Yes, please. Yes, sir. I would like to express my gratitude towards SCRP for giving me this great opportunity. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Shobha Garu and Dr. Purnima Garu for their input in doing this presentation. I'm immensely grateful to Dr. Monshta Garu for her continuous support and guidance in these presentations. My special thanks to Ismail sir and Srinua sir for their technical support. My sincere thanks to Rajesh sir for his cooperation as a team member. And I, I am deeply thankful to the audience, our AP teachers who participated actively. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Thank you On for giving us of support. all the resource persons and you, sir, my and special thanks to government of Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Uh,
now i can be my special thanks to both of three uh, both of you and uh, so rajesh karu also for excellent uh, presentation for today's presentation uh, the topic also very nice so then tomorrow and day after tomorrow the saturday and sunday day, we don't have session and monday we'll meet with another important uh, uh, topic uh, with uh, dr suman bande karu importance of practice in most uh, in mass practicing in mastering uh, spoken english by super mandi garu we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we have that session on monday so till then uh, we'll wait uh, please i request you all viewers please stay connected with your channel and find a subscribe button below the window you please click that subscribe the subscribe the channel so that you can get the notification uh, so for today we are signing out thank you madam munshita ma'am really fantastic presentation and uh, what thank, you. thank you thank you namaskaram namaskaram ma'am